in the previous videos, uh, we looked at how to evaluate the reversible steady flow work in various devices. We also looked at particularly how to evaluate it in a reversible adiabatic or in other words, an isentropic compressor. Um, this is a hypothetical theoretical compressor because real compressors cannot be uh, reversible adiabatic. But then we looked at how to evaluate uh, a reversible adiabatic or an isentropic process occurring in uh, such a compressor. Uh, in this class, uh, in this video, we will be looking at how to evaluate reversible steady flow work in pumps. And uh, we will look at uh, two extremes of compressors, one a, re a reversible adiabatic compressor and the second one a reversible isothermal compressor. And we will compare how those two stack up in terms of the work consumed by those devices. And uh, we will arrive at certain conclusions on how to minimize compressor work using what we have done uh, for the pumps and the compressors. So, um, so we will uh, start and uh, we will say uh, pumps and compressors. So, we saw that uh, for a reversible steady flow device, uh, we saw that the reversible work W dot reversible in uh, is equal to M dot times integral inlet to exit V d p plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. For most pumps that are pumping liquids like water, fuels like diesel, petrol uh, or any other chemical fluids, most of the time the change in kinetic and potential energies are very, very minimal. And so these uh, are small compared to this term here, right. So in other words, delta P E and delta K E are each very small compared to the magnitude of M dot V D P, right. Uh, and so therefore, uh, because of this reason, uh, we can neglect these two terms and uh, we can write for a pump, right, or a compressor in most cases. when we can afford to neglect the changes in kinetic and potential energies, we can write uh, the reversible steady flow work required as the mass flow rate multiplied by the integral I to E uh, V D P, right. And uh, for pumps which are pumping liquids, we know that those liquids tend to be incompressible liquids. And if we do in fact have an incompressible liquid, that means the V does not change appreciably with pressure, uh, which means that this V can be brought out of the integral and uh, I can write for incompressible liquid pumps. Uh, we can write the reversible steady flow work requirement as just M dot times V times integral I to E dP, which is nothing but M dot times V times delta P, where delta P is the uh, exit pressure minus the inlet pressure, right. So that is M dot times V times P at the exit minus P at the inlet. And so oh, I can just write that as M dot times V times P E minus P I, right. And so uh, this is one simplification that we can do if the fluid uh, going through the pump is incompressible. Um, most of the time pumps compress uh, or pressurize liquids 
And so most of these liquids can be considered incompressible in the pressure ranges that are found in those pumps. And if that is the case, in fact, then uh, we can simplify this um, by uh, taking V out. And once we take V out, we just remain, we just are left with delta P. And delta P is just the exit pressure minus the inlet pressure. So that is the work, reversible work required uh, for a pump that is pumping in uh, irreversible uh, pump incompressible liquids uh, and a pump that is reversible, right? So this is uh, one uh, conclusion. So we will now look at compressors, right? So Um, so by the way, so by the way, uh, this is one way of writing this. This is another uh, more convenient, perhaps, way of writing this, is uh, that uh, we can write this in terms of uh, density as W dot reversible required is uh, M dot uh, divided by rho uh, times uh, P E minus P I, right? And so if we have a device uh, through which uh, water is entering and then water leaves, right? And then uh, we're talking about this pressure here as PI and we are talking about the pressure here as PE. Um, in either case, the liquid enters the pump through a conduit, right? And the leaves also through a conduit, some kind of closed enclosure like a pipe, for example, right? And uh, typically, the pipe has an area of cross section, and uh, and so uh, we can write the m dot as uh, equals to um, rho uh, inlet times the area at the inlet times the velocity at the inlet. This is also equal to in a steady flow device, also equal to rho at the exit, a at the exit, and v at the exit. Uh, since rho i and rho e are all the same. So we can just write rho times a i v i, and this we can write as rho times a e v e. Right. So uh, in which case I can plug this into this expression right here, and I can write uh, w dot reversible in as uh, a i v i um, times p e minus p i. Uh, I can also write this as a e v e times p e minus p i. Uh, this is sometimes more um, elegant or sometimes more easier to use um, and so therefore uh, we have this expression as well but we can always derive it using the general expression that we have written here uh, which is uh, then can uh, translate into that. We will now look at compressors and uh, on this side. Um, so. Uh, we saw in the previous video um, that the reversible steady flow work requirement uh, is equal to m dot times integral v d p uh, for from inlet to exit. So we saw that the reversible uh, steady flow work requirement was m dot multiplied by inlet to exit. Uh, VDP after we have neglected the changes in kinetic and potential energies. And uh, if we have um, a reversible adiabatic process um, that is with an ideal gas whose uh, specific heat Cp and Cv are more or less constant, uh, then we can write uh, as a general uh, expression for this process, we can write P V to the gamma is equal to constant, right? And uh, also that uh, this gamma is the ratio of specific heats C P to C V also equal to C P cap to C V cap, right? So we could write 
a general expression for a isentropic process or a reversible adiabatic process um, taking place on an ideal gas whose CV and CP values are more or less constant. Um, so it is important to remember that this is not true for a general reversible adiabatic or an isentropic process. It is only true for an ideal gas whose specific heat CV and CP are constant and which is undergoing a isentropic or a reversible adiabatic process. So this is a very, very restrictive uh, use of this expression and we must remember that this is not generally applicable. Um, so we can write this and on the other hand, uh, if we have a reversible isothermal Uh, compression of an ideal gas, uh, then uh, we can write uh, P times V is equal to constant, right. So here we have P times V raised to the gamma, right, and here we have P times V raised to the power 1, right. So, uh, so these appear different on a PV diagram for example when we compress from a given state P1 uh, to another state to another pressure P2, uh, let us see how they look like on, on a PV diagram. So, let us say that our objective is to compress the gas or the vapor from um, a certain pressure P1, let us say that is our state to begin with and then we want to compress it to another state, another pressure P2 such that uh, P2 is of course greater than uh, P1. So our objective is to go from pressure P1 to pressure P2, right. And uh, for a reversible adiabatic process involving an ideal gas, this would probably look like this. So this is for a reversible adiabatic process or an isentropic process. So because uh, the expression here is P V to the gamma is equal to constant. And remember that I can plot this only if it is an ideal gas. If it is not an ideal gas, it would be some other plot, but not this one, right. And uh, for the other compressor that we had which is the reversible isothermal compressor uh, that would look somewhat like this. It is basically the equation of a hyperbola. So uh, it would look like this. So this would be a reversible isothermal compressor with P times V is equal to constant, right. And so now uh, it becomes possible to compare the work requirements of the reversible adiabatic compressor and the reversible isothermal compressor. And so uh, let us look at the work requirements of these two compressors. While it is very tempting to uh, calculate the work required uh, using this area here, uh, the projected area um, because this projected area is equal to integral PdV. Right. So it is very tempting to do this and declare that the isothermal compressor actually consumes more work than the reversible adiabatic compressor, but that would be not incorrect because uh, the work done or the work requirement of a compressor which we just derived in the previous videos is not integral PdV. In fact, it is m dot times integral VdP which is a very different area calculation from integral PdV. Uh, let us recall that integral PdV is only uh, the 
reversible boundary work done by a closed system. And so in this case, uh, we cannot use integral PDB. We should in fact project the area onto the uh, y axis, which is then uh, going to give us, um, for example, for the isothermal, reversible isothermal compressor, the work requirement is uh, integral VDP, which is the area under the curve projected on the P axis. And so we should be doing m dot times integral VDP, right. So for the same mass flow rate and starting from the same uh, state 1, uh, reaching the same pressure P2, uh, uh, let us say that the reversible adiabatic or the isentropic compressor uh, goes from state 1 to state 2, where the pressure at state 2 is P2 and the reversible isothermal compressor goes from state 1 to state 3, where the pressure at state 3 is also P2, um, then um, and for the same mass flow rate m dot, uh, we will have the reversible work required for a isentropic compressor is always uh, greater than the same requirement for an isothermal So we see that if we compress a gas, uh, ideal gas in an isentropic manner, we will consume a whole lot more work than we would if we compress it in an isothermal manner. We will look at the implications of this conclusion in the following video.